What I saw wasn't human. Oh, my God! <laughs> Very tall. And what's more, it saw me. This thing. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back to another instalment of Rawhead Rex in PC's a sub-series of the podcast under the stairs where we take beloved genre classic Rawhead Rex from 1986. <laughs> Still laughing. Uh, we, t- we take it, we break it up into digestible five-minute reviewable segments, which we then spend far too long discussing. And uh, yeah, get podcasters from around the world to join me on these reviews, which is always a delight. On this episode... We are taking Rawhead Rex minutes 30 through 35. If you are watching at the time codes, uh, there is a broken toy on the ground at the 30 minute mark. And at the 35 minute mark, we have a picture of uh, Andy's terrified face as he runs into Rawhead Rex. What a bookend that is. The man man who originally causes the toy to be outside to be broken is ultimately consumed by the monster. I'm sure that's an old folk tale out there in Ireland. And joining me on this episode to discuss Minutes 30 35 is my good buddy, Mr. Doug Telly. How you doing, Doug? So good, Duncan. <laughs> Very excited to be talking about Rawhead Rex. Oh. I will say, when you said that this was the movie that you wanted to break in, <clears throat> excuse me, to break into pieces, to follow pieces, yep. uh, I was I was a little surprised, right? It was it's a bit of a left field choice, but yep. uh, having now revisited, you know, the last time I watched Rawhead Rex was on VHS. So oh you, Jesus! <laughs> I know it. It was been. It's been a very, very long time. So, um, yeah. So this was a really fun experience yep. to revisit. Yeah, you landed. <laughs> you landed a couple of good segments here. Oh, like, I lucked out big time. Yeah, big time. Well, like, I mean, maybe the only uh, the only person I really envy is the person who gets that final <laughs> fifteen minutes. <gasps> Oh yeah, that's Ricky Morgan. Just got the last two segments back to back. So, uh, and I'm I'm fairly sure he was fist pumping the air as soon as he landed them. I was um, I was watch I was watching the movie in its entirety, not to throw the curtain back too far. Mm-hmm. Uh, yesterday, and my wife walked in during the final fifteen minutes, and she's like, "What the fuck are you watching?" It's <laughs> <Straw> head rats. <laughs> As, as I've been tell- that just raised more questions. <laughs> I've been telling everyone that I've been recording with, uh, there is an alternative universe out there where this movie's slightly better made and Clive Barker doesn't make Hellraiser. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> so like, for, for all its flaws, um, it did open the door to, to uh, well, open the box to Hellraiser. Um, so- it's important. I mean, it's important to think about, you know, that, that butterfly effect mm-hmm. generally. What, what, you know, yeah, but maybe because it's not very good, or because it has all those flaws, I should say, that was what made him want to have the control of directing Hellraiser, 100%, right? And then yeah, yeah. his career would be so different, the world would be so different, we mm-hmm. wouldn't have all of those great Hellraiser sequels that we've been enjoying <laughs> over the past 15, 20 years or so. <laughs> they just keep coming, they just keep That's coming. Right. Uh, the, the other thing that I've been pointing out to everyone is uh, how much Predator just rips off this movie, which is ironic because mm. the guy in the Rawhead Rex suit plays Predator. Um, so, 
which I believe is a fact. I've, I've not fact-checked my fact. I but. have to say, Duncan, I don't think you're right on that. Oh, no, don't say that. I've got at least 10 recorded episodes. I hope this one's the first episode that I, drops. I am actually almost certain you're wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I copied it anyway. There's red glowing laser beams just following people. He hangs the bodies upside down. Come on, he don't tell you. There is a scene where he actually even lifts up a severed head and he's on a hill and lets it a roar. Predator does that one year later. Oh, so. You know what? Now that I think about it, also, uh, David Dukes, at one point, he says, if, if it bleeds, we can kill it. <laughs> yeah, David Dukes, Bill Dukes. I mean, it's the, like, come on. When will this madness stop? Uh, what about that part where he yells, get to the chopper? <laughs> <laughs> Rawhead is coming, we've got to get down. Uh, so, yeah. Come yeah. on, kill me! <laughs> Sorry, we. It I is like the made me most think he played. ridiculous thing to, to, to just start to in sports. Yeah, I, I don't know what made me think he. Like, I, that's, I, I've at least perpetuated that lie about six times, which means on the internet it's now fact. Um, so because I, the, I think the Blu ray of Rawhead Rex has an interview with the guy, right? right. Dude. <laughs> Heinrich von Schellendorf is Rawhead. <laughs> <laughs> and he's only part um, apart from I had a question for you Duncan before we it. get into this oh give me it one thing that I think, feel like this movie does very badly and I mean look it, this movie's taking a lot of heat right mm. and when I saw it on VHS I was like this thing's a piece of shit <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> but I, I have a much better appreciation now, for it now and it's nice to have you know 4K versions of it yep. like that. the movie does a really bad job of, of really suggesting the height and size of Rawhead Rex he doesn't look that imposing. The guy was 6'11 in the suit. And I'm like, he just looks, you know, tall. Not 6'11 like in the suit. He's described in this movie as between 8 and 9 foot tall. I know. But like when he's chasing people through the woods, which is always hilarious. Whenever yeah. that character has to run, it's like yeah. my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> But it's just, it's just, it's like he just looks tall as opposed to like yeah. a monstrous horse-headed demon. Yeah, anytime he runs, he looks like a Teletubby. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it is, there's, there's, like, you kind of feel like whenever he starts running, the Benny Hill music just start playing in the background. Uh, I think it's a missed opportunity. There must be a cut out there. If there isn't, then I've just uh, I've just put that out there on the internet again, which now means there is. Because that's how it works on the internet. I'll tell you, that's how it works. Um, yeah, the, I, I remember, like, the thing is, I grew up with this movie. So mm. I, I, and even as a kid, I knew this movie was utter trash. But by God, is it entertaining. It is, mm. it is so entertaining. Like, no one behaves like a human being in this entire movie. And that's kind of why it's magical. Um, it's just, it's, it's incredible. It's like, the more I think about it, like, as I've been going through it, I, I like, everything is just off. And I like I, I love Clive. Clive Barker is one of my favorite authors. Sure. I mm-hmm. love his film work. But I mean, he did. You know, he did give away the rights for this movie to be made, and he was upset that they didn't have a giant penis with teeth running around eating people, which is basically what's in the book. So yeah. I mean, there is a part of me that's like that. Uh, the, there was only so much budget. <laughs> And they did what they did in here. And to be honest with you, this is 1986. Like, the fact that this is even a movie at all is, you know, is testament to how much drugs were were just in the circulation of studios everywhere. Um, You know, of all the stuff he'd done by then, it is one of the least likely, in my opinion, Barker uh, works to be adapted. I don't Mm. don't understand why anyone was like this. This is the one right here. Like, there's plenty of other things in these books of blood. Or even the Damnation game, um, which would have made a great kind of, like, first pitch Clive Barker movie. The fact that he even went straight to Hellraiser, you know, from Hellbound Heart, as his first movie to direct surprises me as well. Because, like, the, the biggest crime in Clive Barker's kind of back catalogue of things not being made to me is the Damnation game. I think that is, as a debut novel, it is super strong. And yes, it's a kind of quasi Fausty impact sort of movie but our, our book uh, which would be a movie but at the same time I kind of love all the imagery in the book and I'm like that wouldn't be it's a kind of timeless story you can do that whenever um, that this is the one that got picked up always confuses me let's go to Ireland and get non-actors um, <laughs> Like j- just to stand around, like spouting terrible, terrible lines and not acting like humans, it's just nuts I mean, he is kind of an underadapted author, generally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Is yeah, it, so, do you think it's the sexual component? Because oh, I've very always, much so. uh, very, I've always, very much so. I've always thought that, like when I was reading, like even if, like I got into Barger when I was, uh, so I was reading Stephen King when I was like twelve, and um, mm-hmm. I was just very wordy and very, you know, just like the description of rooms. Doug is like, there's not enough fucked up sex in this. There well, what can I move on? Fifteen, <laughs> fifty. I think I was fifteen when I read my first Clive Barker novel. I was like, this is my jam. Like, like, this, <laughs> like this guy's got it going on. Um, so and, and I do. Th- I, I'm kind of like it's either too, it's either too fantasy, like too like out there in like, in fantasy world, or it's too sexually, not even necessarily explicit, but deviant. I think yeah. for for movies that there isn't, there aren't very many of these movies that have, or or works that have that middle ground that are adaptable that way. And I think that's why I I think I'm, I keep hoping that time will out on this that eventually, like. Like the like the we're getting the, the kind of renaissance right now of Stephen King adaptations. Like everyone's doing one. In fact, I, I wouldn't be surprised if next week you tell me you're you're directing a Stephen King movie, because um, everyone's doing one. Or there's like God knows how many in the yeah, pipeline. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, you yeah, would, yeah. You would think that with that and with streaming being the way it is, where like really a lot of the rules are kind of out the window because you can just go straight to Netflix or straight to Amazon that people haven't tapped in and I don't know if that is Barker himself just very tight on the reins of his works now or if there's just a lot that's been bought up and never used or, or what that looks like but we're inevitably always going to get every year um, there's another Hellraiser movie that he's attached to or here comes a Nightbreed TV show yeah 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 um, and in fact I think I actually think what broke him um, and there's a long intro but I'm loving it because I never get to talk about <laughs> Clive Barker ever um, I think um, to me I think what kind of broke him a little bit uh, on, on like a lot of his works being adapted and all the rest was he wrote a series of and it's still to be finished but he wrote a series of kind of young adults books called the Aberat books Right. And um, they're brilliant. I absolutely fucking love them. They're, they're like, like, had they come out about the same time as you know the Harry Potter adaptations and all the rest, there would have been a market for it for those kids that were coming out of Harry Potter and looking for the next thing to grow into. Aberat's perfect for that. Um, uh-huh. And there was some deal with Disney. So it got really, really, really far. And then it just, for whatever reason, it was just all pulled away. And I think he'd invested a huge amount of time and energy into that. And he's obviously not a well man now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I th- I think that's what's kind of ruined him on it. Because um, very, very, very close to being done. I, I mean, it doesn't help that those are like relatively weighty books anyway. And for the books, he painted pictures of all the characters in watercolour. So I think he was doing like about 300 paintings per oh, wow. novel as well wow. as the books. And there's three of them out there, and he's still to do his fourth and fifth, which we may never get now. But they're fucking great. Um, so yeah, I I think that's to me. I would st- I still think there's a time period where that could happen with a. Well, Netflix is doing like lock and key and all the rest. Just do Aberat, please. <laughs> I mean, me. it might be one of those things, and I hate to say this, that after his death we see a lot of different adaptations mm-hmm. because maybe his hands will be off the strings a little bit, I right? I mean. Right. Because he, unlike Stephen King, who, you know, gave his best shot at directing and uh, had an interesting experience with that. I don't know what uh, you mean. Now, listen, <laughs> if there's one thing that movie proves, if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. That's right. I'll just add ACDC and cocaine and you're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, having had that much control over his own directorial work yeah. and seeing with a movie like Rawhead Rex, what happens when he doesn't do that yeah. and some other experiences as well. So, you know, he probably wants to be a little deeper involved than Stephen King is with with his work. And then, I mean, and all sorts of other differences as well. And then if he, he puts that work in and these things don't come to fruition. Yeah. yeah, it just must be devastating again and again, especially when he's also trying to, you know, create new work all at the same time. Well, this is it. Yeah, he's like, it seems like a guy who never really switches off. Um, yeah. And it's creative outputs, not just in the work of, of writing, but it's painting and sculpture and, and, and all the other things that come along with that. So, um, but yeah, this is the movie. This is the movie that basically, like, it's weird that, eh, like, the Shining gets made, and Stephen King's like, "Not on, not on my watch. Let's do maximum overdrive. That'll show them." Rawhead Rex is made, and Clive Barker is like, 
here's Hellraiser, like an absolute fucking classic. So, like, <laughs> oh, by the way, like I've done some short movies before and done some arty things like that, but just look how well I handle all of this. Um, it's nuts, absolutely nuts. <laughs> Um, he saw the he saw Rawhead Rex. He's like, the only thing I'm going to take from this <laughs> is a bunch of shaky accents all the way through my movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come to daddy. That's not your voice. That is not your voice. Right? <laughs> Although when you hear his real voice, you're like, that's why it's overdubbed. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's like it's a pretty terrible voice. Uh, I mean, maybe I'm a little sensitive to this, but like the Howard Hallenbeck, the main character oh. in this, his kid is so fucking irish like he oh, is yeah i'm like it must be impossible to find a kid who's who can do like an american accent anyway in ireland but yeah. i mean it's like just fly just a random kid he doesn't have much to do except for say three lines and get fucking murdered yeah. I, there's, there's a there's a bit later on in this movie where he asks if there's a mcdonald's in dublin and i'm fairly sure he spells it m-e-c-d instead of m-c-d that's how irish he is it's <laughs> fucking <laughs> like, like he's like that. Oh, I'm sure there's one there to be sure. To be sure, is 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 absolutely brilliant. Um, but let, let's talk like because we get a lot of it here of just like <laughs> what we're doing here. This starts with um, a broken robot toy on the ground and a young boy Neil is this young boy's name desperately trying to get out of his caravan um, as Rawhead Rex who heard the noise and was like huh um was like nah it's all right i'm just gonna drag this body away into the bushes and as he's doing that the boy finally manages to get the door open which does make you wonder what is going on here because like my understanding was either the door is locked or it's unlocked there's no in between state and it either one he either is able to open the door or not at all so i like it, it just so happens that when unless rawhead has some power the power of static lock um and then he walks away but the, the the kid finally gets out and sees his beloved noisy cock blocking toy <laughs> on the ground and goes pig the bloody pig <laughs> I, I have to do the act you're in for a treat on this one my friend the accents are in full display any chance to brush off my terrible jamaican irish accent um so anyway meanwhile in the woods andy this is the older brother and his girlfriend are walking for their quote-unquote conversation, which I don't think, I'm just saying, I don't think Andy ever intended on having a conversation, Doug. I think he's, uh, he's got other things in his mind. If you know what I, I don't want to say Andy is representative of a certain kind of man, Duncan. <laughs> um, but this is, this is a gentleman who <laughs> will ignore very unusual sounds in the middle of this caravan park to uh <laughs> yeah try to like, get the second third and slide into home play <laughs> yeah yeah like I, I believe we describe these actions as presidential these days don't we no, yeah. um he's very presidential and uh yeah so he's <laughs> he, he says i'm gonna kill that little brat one of these days um how good is my accents by the way huh spared no expense <laughs> the girlfriend says i just don't think it's such a good idea um because she's like, I need to talk to you. There's something serious we need to talk about. And Andy is not taking the hint at all. He's like, why not? You're feeling a bit cold. Let me warm you up. And they start... Does he... Am I wrong that he does that line twice where she says yes. he's cold? He's like, he's like, let me warm you up. And, I, and the indication is with my dick, right? I'm that's like, literally that's what, what yeah. they're like. Yeah, like, like he, he might as well... Like, this is the easy. He might as well turn around break the fourth wall and wink at the the audience because like we all know what it means and he does he says it twice like he, he does say like later on he comments on the fact that she is warmed up and it turns out all that took for her to get warmed up was to run away up the woods so you don't oh, Andy, it's so romantic here <laughs> outside the caravan park in the middle of these filthy fucking woods with all these dirty Irishmen around. You're making my accent sound authentic <laughs> as fuck. Uh, hey, I'm that. from Newfoundland. I'm basically fucking Irish. You are pretty much <laughs> Irish. Uh, right, so, so anyways, they start making out against the tree and the girl says no. And then we get finally the girl's name, which is Katrina. Um, and Andy's like, oh, come on, Katrina. And she says, you said we could talk. Um, and meanwhile... The boy is in the woods, like, running up, and he comes across Rawhead Rex, pulling a predator, uh, bodies upside down, like, strung you'd up. Have to, you'd have to think that even as a scared young boy, yep. 
That that was the last thing he expected to run into in the woods. <laughs> this fucking eleven foot demon with a corpse strung upside down. What's more terrifying, the eleven foot demon with a corpse like upside down, or your brother having sex with his girlfriend in the woods? Well, I mean, it's a it's a toss up if you knew my brothers, but uh, <laughs> I probably I probably at least distracted him from his broken robot. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's he's raw head eating it and he, he's obviously terrified that this boy is a E1 actor and plain terrified. Um, <laughs> he, he walks <laughs> backwards, trips over a branch. It looks like Rawhead saw the boy and starts walking towards him, but later on, like just about like 30 seconds later, Rawhead's like, ah, it must be nothing. Let me go back to munching. Um, it's, it, In another horror movie, Rawhead would be the one being attacked by a creature. Yeah. <laughs> Just ignoring the sound in the woods, right? <laughs> the thing is, it's hard to tell whether it's like because of, and I'm sure this is something that you've talked about in a lot of these episodes, because of the Rawhead suit and particularly yeah. the head on that suit, yeah. trying to act out, huh, what yeah. was that, requires turning the entire body and walking towards something. <laughs> His eyes aren't straight in the suit either. They're always perpetually cockeyed, which makes me always kind of feel like he's a bit confused. Like he, I mean, I think not... he's just lashing out at the world because of people making fun. <laughs> Can only see things in two dimensions. Ah! Um, so, he's, so uh, m- meanwhile, Katrina shushes Andy because she's heard a noise. Um, <laughs> she's like, shh. And he's like, ah. and she's like, did you hear that? And he says, no. And then goes right back to kissing. Like, no, like, not a put. What, what is it you thought you heard or anything no he just goes right back to it and Rawhead's just like gone back to eating the body so the kid gets up and runs away um, Rawhead ain't giving a fuck about this one because we're now cutting back to some horrible stereotypes here uh, so meanwhile we're, me? <laughs> we're, in a, we're in a caravan and uh, there's an old man asleep with a pint in his hand, like uh-huh. all that's missing is like a, a, like fiddle music in the background. Um, his partner's knitting. I, isn't this the image that's on the Irish flag? <laughs> <laughs> it's on their stamps. Uh, if you're sending a postcard, that's what you're sending. Uh, like he's he's uh, his partner appears to be knitting uh, while watching an old black and white movie because o- only only TV shows or movies in. <laughs> In Ireland or in black and white, because this is the second one. It's not the same one we saw Neil watching earlier on. It's some ro- romance movie, um, and their door's knocked, and she gets up to see it, and uh, little Neil is there, horrible mullet and all, um, <laughs> like pretending to shake, like to print. Uh, and she, so she wakes up, John, John, where do you get up, John? Jo- John, her husband. Uh, John gets up, and she's like, "It's now, I have, I have John written down as Sean. Now, I <gasps> think Sean is. At least Shh. as likely as John, but let's let, let's mean, let's go with John and Sean. Like Sean, John, let, J- John, John, Sean. Yeah. Sean, John. Okay, hell yeah. Now we're now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Sean, John comes over, um, and he's like, I love this because like you can tell he's an old man, right? And it's not because he looks old; it's because he's got the patience of an old man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 fucking no time for this. He spoke about the best dream he was having. I, I did notice when he got startled when he woke up, though. Not a drop of that beer spilled. That's well. Professional, a, pra- a practiced gentleman, a, a method actor, so to speak. I just like, yeah, just like you're saying, running into seeing a child shaking because yeah. he's been so traumatized and just fucking screaming in his face. What's happened, child? Tell us right now. Come on now. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, What is this, son? Speak up. What is it? <laughs> like this. And he's like, I'm a, I do, I do. Like this. So, uh, so <laughs> poor kids are traumatized by being shouted at now by an old man. Um, and then we jump back to the woods and uh, Katrina stops Andy again and she's like, there's something here. And, and of course, Andy, sympathetic as all, says, listen, stop playing hard to get and my fucking skin creeps. I know, right? As- I just like, you know, like, like the, there's clearly something in the woods. You just wonder how much would he be willing to ignore <laughs> potential danger just to get this moving along. But I just like, it's like, oh, I can't believe it. Cock blocked by raw head rex. <laughs> <laughs> by a giant pagan fertility demon. I mean, the irony. Uh, like, so so she, he's, she's like, listen, I want to go back to the caravan. And he's like, well, go back in a minute, which is like not not laying down great game here. Um, and she says, God, I said I wanted to go back. And she leaves and Andy follows. 
Um, and now at the caravan park, instead of young Neil being traumatised by one old man shouting at him, there's now a collection of old <laughs> men shouting at him. <laughs> Just to add misery on top of this one. They're all like, what did you see, son? What did you... What did you what's the matter? What are you tell us? Um, and, uh, and of course, because the kid's not answering, yeah. all the other, all the Irish people are turning towards Sean John. He's, they're like, "What is it? What's wrong with this young man?" And he's like, "I, I don't, don't know. know. I, don't, I was drinking my beer." Um, <laughs> it's, it's like a, a, a cacophony of nonsense. And um, we basically then cut back to Andy chasing after Katrina in the woods. Um, they catch up together. There's a lot of kind of "I forgive you" sort of dialogue, which I'm like, I don't know if I would. Andy seems like a bit of a creep. Um, I think he calls her like a poor little baby. Yeah, which I what mean, a, what oh. a piece of fucking garbage. Well, I'll tell you what, Duncan. <laughs> I I hope I hope he receives some sort of comeuppance. <laughs> yeah, I, I think later on we should give him a hand. Um, so uh, yeah, so anyway, they they decide to to kiss and make up, and as they're doing Aww. that, Katrina catches sight of the predator strung up dead body, um, and then screams. This scream is artistically paired with young Neil, who appears to also scream like a girl. Um, yeah, well, I mean, we hate to say someone's <laughs> screaming like a girl, but Neil, I mean, it literally is paired to make it seem like he's screaming like a girl. Also, yeah. I think his pitch is even higher, so, I mean, come on. I, th I think so. And then Andy's like, run! Um, <laughs> I, I was, I was now he wants to go back to the caravan. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on! Uh, so they, 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 start, they, start, they start running, they start running, 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 and um, as they're running, we know the way the camera's going that inevitably they're going to bump into someone. And wouldn't you know it, they bump into Rex, who literally just sticks his head out from behind the tree and goes, um, <laughs> <like this. laughs> uh, And Andy, uh, we get a shot of Andy's terrified face. And that is the end of our five minutes, Doug Tilly. I will say that the, the way that the camera work works as yep. they're running through the woods it's kind of got this low angle from behind i love that it kind of it just at the very end it just zooms right into his arm yeah. and it's just like that's where it's going <laughs> that's where <laughs> ryan is, is featured just to give you a little little taste for the little gag that's going to happen a few minutes later i'm just going to say and again i'm just i'm going to be stepping on the person who goes next yeah the fact that she is walking <laughs> towards these uh, like old irish guys yep. And she thinks she's still holding a person's hand and like moving her hand around freely oh, with yeah. another hand in it and realizing that it's severed. I just, I guess when she, you're that terrified, it's a little bit more believable, but come the fuck on. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, well, I've already recorded that. And I think that was my first comment is how do you not know you're holding a severed human hand? And also how do all those people that are watching her walk towards her not be thinking to themselves, what's that bloody stump she's got in her hand? Like, it's just, it's, oh, I get the joke. Well, I get the gag. I get the, the effect. But in this movie, it don't work. <laughs> well, in the defense of all of these people in the caravan park, I mean... <laughs> They're all, as they would say back in Newfoundland, half cut. So yes, uh, they are half cut. Yeah, <laughs> half cut translates over here. That's how we describe people that are on their way. Um, so, Doug, do you have a favourite line of dialogue or a, <laughs> like a particular sequence in these five minutes that's worth mentioning just before we ring this out? I mean, it's not a dialogue-filled section of no. Rawhead Rex, but I certainly the kid finding the robot and saying, "Pig, the bloody pig." <laughs> Is uh, is is got to be up there for me, or perhaps uh, <laughs> perhaps Annie's consistent sex pestery, if only because he gets his comeuppance in the end. Yeah. I I uh, my favorite um is just the old man shouting at a terrified child. <laughs> like I just I just love it because it, of all the things, it's probably the most true to life. Yeah, that, like, I mean that's true. Yeah, you know, that's probably the bit where you're like, come on, child, just I'm an old man. I've seen it all. Tell me what's happened here. And he's like, there's a, there's there's something in the woods. Of course there is. There's animals. You know, what I mean? like he's just like an angry, <laughs> angry old man, and I love it for that. Uh, Doug Tilly, you're a busy guy. You've got podcasts out there. Where can people check out your stuff? Well, uh, you can always find me every Monday over at cinemasmorgasbord.com, which is a podcast that has a bunch of sub-podcasts, including ones devoted to such diverse topics as the career of Eric Roberts, of course, uh, as well as Jackie Chan, Alejandro Jodorowsky, George Kennedy, lots of stuff over at cinemasmorgasbord.com. And also, uh, recently relaunched, after three years away, the uh, No Budget Nightmares podcast. Oh, uh, wow, congratulations. Micro budget and shot on video cinema. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can find the latest episodes over at nobudgetpodcast.com or you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash nobudgetnightmares. 
Phenomenal. I did not know that. That's great news. It's It was a surprise even to me. Uh, it, it, three years is a long time. You know, we stopped at the beginning of the lockdown, the yep. beginning of like, March 2020, exactly, and just had not been recording. And then my co-host had some stuff that he was dealing with, and it was just hard for us to get things started again. And uh, I, what I told people, and they would message me all the time, it's like, hey, is it coming back? Is it coming back? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, as soon as he says he's ready, we're ready to go. And then one day he messaged me. He's like, okay, let's do it. And I'm like, well, we are doing it. <laughs> it's it's very similar. Like the way that I take notes for this, yeah. like the 15 minute segments, it's like that just, but it's like how you are doing it, right? For basically the entire movie, detailed notes yeah. for every <laughs> single thing that happens. And as you would know, Duncan, that's a time consuming process. So it's a, it it's right now it's monthly, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll speed it up if, if people uh, are responding to it phenomenal i can't wait to check it out man i cannot wait uh ladies and gentlemen this is another one of these episodes done um the ordering is all over the place because that's what we do on these in pieces things so <laughs> this may be the first one you've heard this may be the last one it could be somewhere in the middle i'm releasing an episode of podcast under the stairs every single day in october though so um there will be more of me tomorrow uh so until then i'll speak to you next time